Blackjack is commonly known as 21, or if you play like I do, 22. <laughs> First, let's cover the basics. The person who runs the game is the dealer. Their duties include exchanging your money into chips, shuffling and dealing the cards, and paying off winning bets. When you play blackjack, you're actually playing against the dealer or house. The object of blackjack is to have your cards equal the total higher than the dealer's without exceeding 21. Now, the dealer starts the game by giving each player two cards. The values of those cards are added to give you a total. Jacks, queens, and kings all count as tens. Aces count as one or 11. Now, all the other cards count as face value. I think it might be easier to show you how to play rather than tell you. So why don't I just sit in and play a couple of hands? OK, Kathy, what's the first thing I need to know? OK, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to place your bet in the circular wreath in front of you. Each table posts a small sign that tells the minimum and maximum bets allowable. So I'm uh, kind of a big spender. I'll put down my usual Tensky. How much could I win? If you won, you would be paid whatever you originally bet. So if you bet $10, you would win $10, unless you have a blackjack. Then you are paid one and a half times your bet. Then your $10 would become $15. Hey, that's pretty good. So what's next? When all the bets are down, the dealer deals each player two cards. The dealer will also take two cards, one face down, the other face up. If you've been dealt a blackjack, you win automatically. Unless you get a blackjack. Right. If we tie, you have what is known as a push, where you don't win or lose. And the game just continues? That's right. If no blackjacks were dealt, the player can choose to stand or hit. To stand means you're going to stay with the cards you have and hope you're close enough to 21 to beat the dealer. Without going over? Correct. You signal the dealer you want to stand by a simple wave of your hand over the cards with the palm face down. Signal the dealer like this? <laughs> now, if you want to improve your hand, you can signal the dealer for a hit which means you want to take another card to try to get closer to 21. If you go over 21, you bust and lose. Unless I bust, then all players still in the game who haven't gone over 21 win automatically. Anything else we should know? If a dealer's total is 16 or less, the dealer must draw additional cards. When the total becomes 17 or higher, the dealer must stand and not take any more cards. This is the game in its simplest form. But there are some variations, like splitting. Say you've been dealt a pair. You could split the pair into separate hands, but you must place the same amount as you originally bet next to each hand. Oh, and then you just keep taking cards until you're satisfied with each total. Right, unless you split aces. Then you get only one card on each hand. Now, I've heard this term doubling down. Is that another of those signals? <laughs> doubling down is simply an opportunity to double your original bet. You may only double on your first two cards and get one more card from the dealer. Now, I've heard you can actually buy insurance during blackjack. Doesn't that slow the game down a little bit? <laughs> it's not that kind of insurance, Mr. Schreiner. If the dealer's up card is an ace, you will be asked if you'd like to buy insurance, which means you may place an additional bet, up to half of your original bet, on the chance that the dealer's down card is a 10 or a face card. In effect, you are buying protection against the dealer having blackjack. If the dealer does have a blackjack, your insurance bet pays two to one or double your insurance bet. If the dealer does not have blackjack, you lose your insurance bet and the game proceeds as normal. Well, Kathy, this has really been helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. If you've got a question, no matter how ridiculous you might think it is, just walk right up and ask. Remember, people have been playing this game a long time, and you'd have to be pretty smart to come up with a question that the dealers haven't already heard. Yeah, turn my Tenski into a Twenski. Now, this is a roulette table. Players place their chips on a selected number or numbers. They win when the ball settles into a slot which corresponds to the numbers they've chosen. The wheel has 38 slots, numbered 1 to 36, plus a green zero and double zero. Half the numbers are red, half are black, half are odd, half are even. Numbers are placed randomly on the wheel with the red and black numbers alternating. Now, as for the roulette table, the numbers from 1 to 36 are divided into three columns. Each column contains 12 numbers and pays 2 to 1. Zero and double zero are at the head of the columns and pay 35 to 1. 
all of the number and color combinations offer a wide variety of betting options. Fact is, you don't even have to bet on one number. You can bet two numbers at a time, four numbers, or a series of numbers. Oh, and you'll notice the roulette chips are different from the other casino chips. They vary in denomination and color. Different colored chips are used to distinguish one player's bets from another when more than one player bets on the same number. Now, any number of players can bet on the same number, but remember, always exchange your roulette chips back into casino chips before you leave the table since the roulette chips have no value except in the game you're playing. When a winning number is determined, the dealer takes in all the chips but the winners and pays off the winning bets. Once this is done, the players make bets prior to the next spin and the whole thing starts all over again. Before we play the game, let's talk about the odds. They range from even money all the way up to 35 to 1 on a single number bet and everything in between. All right, let's see how the game is played. I'll just watch or, oh no, I'll tell you what, maybe I'll do my play-by-play. All right, the dealer is getting ready, and there he goes, giving the wheel a spin, a tremendous spin, and with the wheel going in the right direction, the dealer has now deftly delivered the roulette ball into the opposite direction. Oh, the grace of this defies description, ladies and gentlemen. The game has begun. Oh, there's a player asking for some chips. The dealer is going to his chip pile. There's the count. The delivery, a beautiful delivery right down the pike. Okay, all right, there appears to be some confusion with the player playing blue chips. He's going to play red, no black. No red, no, it's definitely red. A gutsy move. There seems to be a flurry of last minute activity here as betting concludes. No more bets, please. You heard it, ladies and gentlemen. The dealer has just declared that no more bets be placed. All right, this one is in the hands of the roulette gods. The wheel is slowing, slower, slower. There goes the ball, it's bouncing, and it's landed. We have a winner, we have a winner! Now many of the games here at Caesars have an international flavor. Here's one that's played in casinos throughout the world. It's called Baccarat. And this is the Baccarat table. Now, maybe because Baccarat was invented for King Louis VIII and played by the French aristocrats, many people shy away from playing it. But Baccarat is actually a very simple game. The only decisions you have to make are how much to bet, which hand to bet on, and if you're really neurotic, which hand to bet with. Now, wagers are made on either the banker or the player. These bets pay even money. The winning hand is the one which has a total closest to nine without going over. Tens, cards totaling ten, or face cards count as zero. If the cards total a two-digit number, only the last digit is counted. For example, two cards totaling twelve would only count as a two. Now the two dealers in the center collect and pay out the bets. Opposite the dealer is a caller who directs the game and passes the shoe after each hand. Two hands of two cards each are dealt from the Baccarat shoe. You'll notice the shoe is a little formal, but that's probably because all the cards come in suits. <laughs> the Baccarat shoe holds a total of eight decks of cards. The shoe passes around the table in a counterclockwise direction after each winning player's hand. If you're betting on the bank, place your bet on the numbered slot marked bank. Place your bet on the area marked players if you're betting on the player. Thank you. Now play begins when the shoe is passed to the first person or banker who slides the cards out of the shoe and deals four cards face down. First card goes to the player, second to the bank, third to the player, and fourth to the bank. The person with the highest bet on the player's hand turns them over and tosses them back to the caller who lays them down and announces the total. Player show six. The person with the shoe then turns the two bank cards face up tosses them to the caller, who announces the total, and displays the two hands. Bank wins, seven over six. We pay the bank. If either hand totals eight or nine, the player or banker automatically wins. This is called a natural. Now, if no one has a natural, either side may draw a third card, dealt face up, first to the player's hand and then to the banker's hand. The hand closest to nine wins, and all winning bets are paid. In this case, the player shows 13, which becomes 3. And the banker wins with 5, since 10's count as 0. Now there is one additional bet on the table, the tie bet. If the player and banker end up with the same total, a tie bet will pay off at 8 to 1. Now in Baccarat, if you bet on the banker and win, you must pay a 5% commission on your winnings. Now if you find yourself a little confused, you're probably not alone. All you have to do is come down to the casino and try the games. 
If you forget how to bet, what to bet, or even how to play, just ask the dealers or the supervisors for a little help. If you feel you're not ready for Baccarat, start with Mini Baccarat. It's virtually the same as Baccarat, but it's on a smaller table, has only one dealer, and the player never handles the shoe. Mini Baccarat is a great way to learn the fundamentals of the game before you try your luck at regular Baccarat. Have fun and good luck. All right, let me explain. The game is played with two dice. The lowest number you can roll is two. The highest is 12. Now, the average table here is about the size of a large billiards table and accommodates up to 16 people. Although it looks complicated, both ends have the same diagram. The middle section is used for one roll or proposition bets, and I'll explain those in a moment. Now, the person running the game is the box person who sits in the middle behind the table and puts all the money in the box. He's in charge. He also examines the dice if they're thrown off the table. Now, the only time I threw the dice off the table is once I was trying this new sidearm throwing technique, which I later discontinued when I, I suffered a severe rotator cuff injury and was told I may never shoot again. Now, two dealers stand on either side of the table. They give change, collect bets, pay the winners, and place bets. Then there's the stick person who retrieves the dice and gives them back to the shooter after all payoffs have been made. In addition, they yell out the number on each roll and let everyone know when there is a new shooter. Here they go, coming out for a new shooter. Now that you know who's who in craps, you need to know what's what, right? Right. Now before play begins, the shooter, the one who throws the dice, selects two dice. Each must roll all the way down the table and hit the wall at the other end. Whatever the shooter throws determines whether bets are won or lost. In craps, you're never betting with or against the house, you're always betting with or against the dice. Now the first roll of the dice is called the come out roll. If you bet on the pass line, you say the shooter will make the point. A bet on the don't pass line says you think the shooter won't. Now, if you do bet the pass line and the shooter rolls a 7 or an 11 on the first roll, you win. If a 2, 3, or a 12 is rolled, that's craps and you lose. If none of these numbers comes up but a 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10 is rolled, that number becomes the point. And the shooter must roll that number again before a 7 is rolled in order to win. Now, betting don't pass is just the opposite. You lose if the first roll is 7 or 11, and you win if it's a 2 or a 3. 12 is a standoff, and no one wins. You win if a 7 is rolled before the point repeats, and you lose if the point is made before a 7 is rolled. Oh, and once a point is made, you can make a totally separate bet. It's called a come bet and is independent of the established point. It means that the next roll of the dice becomes the start of a new game for you, and all the same pass line rules apply. Now, you've probably heard the expression, playing the field. In addition to being a widely practiced dating strategy, it's a one-roll bet. In craps, that says if a 2, 3, 4, 9, 10, or 11, or 12 is rolled, you win. You place this bet in the area marked field. There's also one-roll bets called proposition bets that are made in the center of the table, such as hardway bets. You bet that 4, 6, 8, or 10 will be rolled as a pair like two twos, two threes, two fours, or two fives. Now, if any other combination of the number or a seven is rolled, you lose. If at any time you get confused or aren't sure what to do, just ask the friendly staff who will be glad to answer your questions. If you haven't played craps, give it a try. Fortunes can be won on one roll of the dice.